Hi, welcome. Uh, so I got a bit bored over Christmas, so I would thought I would bore you even more with my bike history. So um, won't be too long a video because I have not had too many bikes, but um, let me take you through that. So my first bike was a Suzuki GP100, um, a two-stroker of course. Love this bike. First bit of freedom. Thought I was a bee's knees. Um, I used it for college, and then I used it to traveling uh, to work at Donus Holcomb. So uh, yeah, a, a really great bike, flawless, did what it's supposed to do, perfect. After working away for a year, I managed to save up enough money and bought myself an RG125. This was brand new in the country, very rare, love this bike. It would do 80 as standard in its 12 horsepower form. I uh, used it for work and that. I managed to smash it up within the first six weeks um, by driving into the back of a car. Silly me. Anyway, took a while to get it rebuilt. Uh, I then decided I wanted to get the power valve sorted out. So I went to an old British motorcycle shop uh, run by Terry Hobbs and got him to machine me a tube that uh, basically gave you all the power at the top end. Uh, but basically what this did was made it unrideable because it needed rejetting. So I tried to rejet it and I just messed it up even further. So I chopped it in. Uh, so after this I took a break and got into cars, Mark II Escorts, Ford Capris etc. Uh, these are ideal for dating girls, better than the motorbike, but I did have the itch for it again. So I went off and bought myself a TS125. I use this mostly for work, uh, up and down a dual carriageway, uh, about 32 mile round trip. I managed to get through three pistons on this by melting them. Uh, third time scored the barrel really badly. They said I need a new barrel, etc. etc. I just put it back together and sold it on. Again, after a break and some life changing things going on in my life, I decided to get back on the bike in the end. So I bought the Honda CG125. Fabulous bike, four stroker. I was doing the same sort of trip I was doing before. This never missed a beat. It was a great little bike. In fact, I started to use it for a bit of fun. I used to go up my own across the moors and that down here. Great bike. But I felt I needed to do my test and I was encouraged to go and do that. So I went and uh, took the test and passed it first time. So as soon as I passed the test, I went and traded the CG in for a Kawasaki GPZ 500. Uh, cracking bike. I thought this is a good, happy medium for getting a full blown sports bike to something that was quite dull. This is sort of in between for me, so I could learn some real life skills out there, and which I did. Um, the only thing I found with this thing was it was a bit bit gutless after getting a bigger bike later on, but in the meantime, it did what I had to do. A exhaust, failure saw me change exhaust for a two and a one. Um, apart from that, it didn't miss a beat. Craving a bit more power, I traded the GPZ in for a ZZR600. Um, all the magazines said if you want the performance of a 750 and a 600, this was a bike to buy. Now, that magazine was a few years old and the bike was a few years old, but I bought it and again, this was a big power jump for me and I loved it. Uh, the only problem I had with it is when I um, crashed it, which is probably not the best thing to do with a bike. Uh, so. After a few weeks of recovering, I decided to repair it. Um, I had some local guys respray it, but I sprayed it in a more modern ZZR color scheme, so it looked really nice. But I got a bit bored with it, and I knew I wanted some of the house. I rolled into a local motorcycle shop, and uh, I fell in love with the Ninja 600. So I went and bought it. This was a one-year-old. Uh, Ninja 600 uh, Kawasaki Racing Green, the only colours I have it in. Oh, what an awesome bike. Focused. I really love this bike. I started to do track days with it with a few friends, so uh, yeah, I've, I learned even more on it. Uh, fantastic bike. I can't really fault it. It did everything. Not one thing went wrong with it. But I thought, I can't use this for work because I just ruin it. So I went and bought myself a XBR 500 for a hack. So I had two bikes. So XBR for work and the odd run out if the weather was dirty. The Ninja for, for track days and going out with the lads. 
I didn't maintain it though very well and the big ends went on it and it wasn't worth repairing so I sold it as a spares or repair. So I went and bought myself a Gilera scooter. This was a 180cc two stroke by God. This was quick for a little scooter. I never had a scooter before as well. I found the handling a bit ropey. But uh, this thing would do 90 standard flat out down a dual carriageway. So being Italian, it would go well, look nice, but it would just shake itself to bits. Um, the exhaust used to break, uh, fall apart. The spark plug cap used to wear and fall off and eventually the oil pump packed up and it seized it. So I'd have that uh, rebuilt. And then I thought, right, I need a decent hack. So I went and bought myself a ZR7. Uh, love this bike, comfy, old technology in a new bike, big four cylinder, great bike to ride uh, for just cruising around and that. Uh, but unfortunately I smashed my ninja up and I put myself in hospital and after recovering I said right I'm not riding bikes anymore so I sold the ZR7, uh, one of my regrets but hey ho. So again keeping within the theme of this video. Another big life changing experience, I went and decided that I need to get back into biking. So I went and bought a Ducati 796. I didn't go to buy it, I went to buy a Kawasaki ZR 750, if I remember. Uh, but this was the same price point, so I thought I'd try it, and by God, I loved it. I knew it as soon as I started to ride it down the road that this would be the bike for me. I think the airbox growl sold it to me, so I went and bought it. I just, I just did it, <laughs> which is not like me. Um, and then, a uh, short while later, I put some arrow cans on it just to get that big V thumping sound. Oh god, sounded beautiful. Uh, I took it down to the French Alps with a group of uh, lads and it really came into its own down there, especially coming out the hairpins, you know, launching yourself up to the next one. Compared to the big four strokes, uh, they struggled to spin up in time before their next corner, so yeah, I was well happy with that. It wasn't the most comfortable ride down to the French Alps and back, but I did it. Um, but then for some reason I thought I needed to go touring so I went and bought myself a old Triumph Trophy four cylinder. I took my partner down to France in it and she found it really comfortable so much so in fact she fell asleep on it a couple of times but uh, I found a really like touring. Uh, the only thing with the Triumph was it was big and it was heavy and she wouldn't change her mind when she set her up for a corner. So I thought, right, I need to get something a bit more modern. So I went and bought myself a Suzuki V-Strom 650. Ah, perfect bike. So again, took it down to France, down into the Alps with a group of lads. Perfect bike. Um, not as much fun around the twisties as the Ducati Monster, but it took all my luggage. I didn't have to have a rucksack this time. Uh, but I found it a bit lacking in power. So again, I went and bought a a nice big BMW, an R1200 GS LC. Um, it was only a few months old when I bought it, but it had already been to Europe and back. So uh, yeah, perfect. And I've enjoyed this bike ever since, I still own it. So I've been to Spain many a times on it. I've been to Portugal, been to France, Belgium, Germany, Italy. Uh, it does everything I need it to do. But I was lacking a bit of fun in my life. So <laughs> I wanted uh, an old classic. But I couldn't find anything that I really wanted uh, that was rideable but still appreciating in value. So I did find a TL 1000S and I went and bought that. So that is my Sunday and fun day bike. You may notice there's a bit of a theme going on here with twins. So again, a nice big Lita V twin. One of the early TLs, so uh, quite a few issues with them. Uh, mine's pretty much standard bar the rear shock being changed and the exhaust uh, but I've had all the typical issues with electrical um, gremlins uh, it not getting under the hot mat because it thinks it's too cold and all sorts of stuff like that so but I love it and I do take it out when I get a chance to and then I thought oh I don't want to ride my TL to work I don't want to ride the Beamer to work I went and bought myself a scooter for work. You may laugh, but I'll tell you what, this is twist and go, easiest riding you can ever think of, and at 120 miles to the gallon, £20 a year to tax, it's cheap motoring for what I need. 
and I don't mind it being out in all weathers. £2,000 brand new on the road, bargain. So yeah, this is my um, hack for work. But being greedy, I thought, mm, I, I need a proper classic bike. So I went and bought myself a bike I wanted for years and years, but never got around to doing it. And I wanted something I could build in my workshop and say, I've done it all myself. Yeah, it's not exactly right as a showroom, but it's a rideable bike and I can enjoy it. So I went and bought myself Honda CB400 F2, 1977. This is the state it was in when I got it. Uh, I've stripped it down and I'm currently rebuilding it so um, now I've put a few videos of that up already so this is what it currently looks like well actually there's a bit more on it now but this is the only picture I can find for the minute okay so I've probably bored you long enough now because it's nearly 11 minutes long this video so uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you all soon happy new year to you all and bye bye for now